All right, so I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but I'm extremely excited to actually look into OpenAI's Codex. So today is August the 12th, and I recently received the invitation to the OpenAI Codex, and I'm super excited to actually try it out. So um, in this video, I'm only going to go through an overview of the OpenAI Codex, and then um, in future videos, we're actually going to be more hands-on than in this one. So uh, I'm super, super excited. Um, also, I want to say that I received this invite like Codex was released two days ago or something like that, or yesterday. And uh, their, um, their, what it is their waitlist has been posted recently so i'm super excited that i got very early in uh what i also want to say is that um, i didn't actually get an invite for the github copilot and it's like seven weeks later now so i applied for an invite to the github copilot and the folks at github uh i don't know they um they didn't send an invite just as yet so, OpenAI Codex, let's uh, look at some of the most important things. So, is most capable OpenAI Codex um, is most capable in Python, but it, it is also proficient in a uh, over a dozen languages, including JavaScript, GoPro, PHP, Swift, TypeScript, and even Shell. And I'm actually going to do some, uh, I'm actually going to write some very simple shell scripts for my uh, other YouTube channel when it comes to cybersecurity in future videos. It has a memory of 14 kilobytes for Python code compared to GPT-3, which has only 4 kilobytes. Interesting. So 14 kilobytes versus 4, this is like 3.5 times as much. So it can easily take... Uh, into account over three uh, times as much contextual information. Now, GPT-3 main skill is to generate natural language. Codex has much of the natural language understanding of GPT-3, but it produces working code. So, uh, in this case here, we're talking about the definition of OpenAI Codex. OpenAI Codex produces working code from natural language. So, you can issue commands in English 20 piece of software with an API. Now, here are some very important statements that the folks at OpenAI have outlined very well. Codex empowers computers to better understand people's intent, which can empower everyone to do more with computers. Once a programmer knows what to build, the act of writing code can be thought of breaking a problem down into simple problems, mapping those simple problems to existing code that already exists. The latter activity is the least fun part of programming and it's where OpenAI Codex excels most. So I wanna uh, actually say something that I've also replied uh, in a tweet yesterday, I believe, because a lot of people were hyped on uh, no code, on hashtag no code on Twitter, and also on um, Codex from OpenAI. Uh, and the fact that it's gonna like completely change the world. Of course, yeah, it's gonna revolutionize things. But the thing is that uh, people do still have to know what algorithms are, how to uh, solve problems. They have to have basic uh, problem solving skills to, to actually design or build with no code or OpenAI Codex. So of course, OpenAI Codex and no code uh, applications and platforms such as um, Webflow, Codular, Bubble, uh, these empower more non-technical people to actually build stuff. But the caveat is that those builders have to have a basic understanding of algorithms and how to problem solve. So, yeah, 
this is still a prerequisite not only for people who want to code but also for people who are using so coding the traditional way or people who are using codex and other no code uh, tools now OpenAI is general purpose programming model meaning that can be applied to essentially any programming task So this is now available in private beta and we're aiming to scale up as quickly as safely as possible. Join the codex waitlist. So for now, uh, the if you get an invite, your, um, your completions are actually free or your use for the codex is free, but uh, they will probably implement some sort of a pricing later on. Now, Important thing, uh, you can join the Codex waitlist. This is separate of GPT-3. You can enter the Codex challenge, which is in around five minutes. So this is going to start in five minutes. And I've actually applied to this one and uh, I'm uh, not sure if I'm going to get there as soon as it starts. But once I finish this video, I'm actually going to go into there. Uh, there are uh, three important things that I want to point out. First, read this. Second, read the paper from archive. So the release paper explaining evaluating large models train on code. This is from July. So uh, version two, July 2021. And this actually explains a codex very thoroughly. I think I have it opened here somewhere. So yeah, so this is actually a 35 paper for 35 page paper explaining in very big detail with a lot of addendums and a lot of uh, appendices OpenAI Codex. Now, aside of that, we have the um, documentation and the quick start for Codex in the uh, OpenAI documentation. Also, we have examples, so uh, the folks at OpenAI have done a good job in actually categorizing uh, capabilities of GPT-3 and also Codex. Uh, and in this case, uh, the Codex examples are in the code section. We'll probably be looking into these in a future video, into all of them. Right now, I just want to mention them. Of course, you can access Codex via the GPT-3 Playground, which is using uh, selecting the model here. So if you have access to GPT-3, you have access to the base models, the four ones, you have access to the instruct models. And if you also uh, have access to Codex, you'll, have, you'll be having two uh, Codex models here, Da Vinci and Cushman which is faster uh, and almost as capable as Da Vinci Codex. Now, important thing, we have 4,096 tokens instead of 2,048, which uh, are for the uh, GPT-3 models. And, of course, if you want to just start out and... Um, try this out as fast as possible you can start with the codex javascript sandbox so like for example um, if you click on the eye here you have a couple of examples so for example display this image of a cat make a snowstorm on a uh, black background let's try this one see how it performs And as you can see, it starts completing, and you're going to see the result over here. This is how you can actually build a game. Uh, let's um, place a blue ball on the center left side of the screen. A 
and the ball actually bounces and the screen is actually changing so stop bouncing the ball let's see what so it stops bouncing which is it sets the vi y coordinate to zero and in this case i think it was probably chosen random uh stop the ball and place it at the top of the screen let me run this clear the canvas let's actually clear everything and start over let's say write a function that calculates the area of a cube for example function cube area side ask for user input let's see prompt enter the side length of a cube interesting so I just said ask for user input and it knows so this is the memory that we're talking about it knows to prompt for the side length of a cube but I don't see the prompt anyway so I could just simply export this to JS fiddle uh, once the input is valid and once the input is valid is received and is valid calculate the area using the function make a one page app with all the above let's see so this is very 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 the area of a cube with a side length null is zero create an input field for user input okay create a submit button for the input now let's see when user clicks submit what should we do when user clicks submit calculate the area using the function okay let's say 12 submit the area of a cube with a side length of 12 is 864 let's see how it does math what is 12 what is the area of a cube formula for the area of a cube 6a squared so in this case we have a being 12 so 6 times 12 raised to the power of 2 uh, 6 times 12 to the power of 2 864 so now this is wow dang I'm I'm so I'm actually really 
I don't know, it's like overwhelming. Let me just see if I make the submit button very stylish. Let's see what it understands by very stylish. <laughs> Do the same for the input. Wow, check this out. Do the same for the output. Let's see if it understands if this is the output. Yeah, it understands that these and these are the output. Make a header saying make a stylish page header saying with the title cube area calculator let's see if it's a, if we say place it at the top interesting place the header at the top of the page yeah style everything in a good looking way Let's try this again, six. Okay, so I'm completely sold on this one. We are definitely going to explore this uh, in future videos. So I don't know, this was a very, very, very from the top of my head rough example, but I am simply overwhelmed and this is the end of the video